Dillon, the top artists of the last 100 years, by far, that come up on many, many conversations by art academics in the art world. We're talking university university professors, gallery owners that invite gallery owners, um, museum curators are all speaking of the last 100 years, the top names that hands down, by far, who are the most important to the world of modern art and who have had the most significant influence in the art market are Pablo Picasso, Marc Chagall, Salvador Dali, Jean Miro, and Erte. The reason for that, ladies and gentlemen, is because not only did they each challenge themselves, they also individually challenged the viewer. All five went a different direction. They pushed the envelope, if you will. You think of Salvador Dali, you think of Spanish surrealism, you think of Marc Chagall, you think of, he stands on top of his own mountain, you think of uh, Pablo Picasso, of course, you think of Cubism. Again, yes, Marc Chagall stands on top of his own mountain. When you see a Marc Chagall, you know it's a Marc Chagall. Then there is Erte. He is the father of Art Deco. South Beach, Miami would not look like South Beach were it not for Erte. These internationally renowned artists built bridges in the industry that are so big and so far, it's astronomical. Most artists throughout their entire lifetime have tried and will be trying to step foot on these bridges in hopes to reach new heights, but will only be disappointed. Why? Because there will only be one Picasso, one Chagall, one Erte, one Sh Miro, and one Dali to ever have existed on Earth. That's it. That's why these five mentioned will be legend for hundreds of thousands of years to come. Now, each one of the five mentioned actually started from classic training and evolved over time from their individual influential life experiences, amazing talent, and creative ability. Well, myself and Piano Cruz's Fine Arts are proud to have an art collection, and soon will be in yours, providing you with a successful bidder on what you're looking at right now here on the Pacific Star. Now, I know most of you already know who, he, who these guys are, but for the few of you who don't, ladies and gentlemen, on stage, front and center, February... 2007, I have original Erte, not one, but two, a tremendous selection. Good luck even finding a place online that has such, uh, other than the Martin Lawrence Gallery, you happen to have the Chalk and Vermilion Fine Arts, which is the head publisher of Erte. Their outlet is Martin Lawrence Gallery. So, yes, this would be, Martin Lawrence would be a great place to find out what these are selling for on land. Also, now's the time to jump on the phone, phone your financial advisor, talk to your appraisers, talk to people in the Fine Art Gallery, and let them know you have a chance to own original Erte. Very, very important. If you have never heard of this guy, don't bid on him. <laughs> Why not? Because it would be. Oh, I can't Detrimental see what to bank balance? <laughs> this is a huge honor to own something so important. There is only one name in the last 100 years that stands at the very top. No That's him. That's a real Picasso, signed in pencil. Why do they use graphite instead of pen? Because it lasts longer. Did you guys know for the last 50 years, 15 years of Picasso's life, he never paid for anything? Of course he wouldn't. Interestingly enough, he would go into a, a TV store, for example. He'd buy a TV for, say, $500. I mean, back in, uh, he passed away in 73, so even in the early 70s, late 60s, $500, that's a pretty killer TV. Nevertheless, he would say to the merchant, I want the best. So the, the, the merchant would say, there it is, right over there. It's a big, huge, you know, at that time, state-of-the-art. TV, 500 bucks. He, he, now, Picasso was really smart. He had oversized checks made, and he signed the check, Pablo Picasso. Just above his signature, he put a fancy little 30 or 40 second doodle. Mm. Now, if you that's had a signed, <laughs> if you had a signed original Picasso, because that's, an, that's actually an art drawing he put on that check, right? And he signed it. That's his actual signature. So technically, on that check now is an original Picasso. If you if you had one of those checks, would you cash it? <laughs> Nobody ever did. Nobody did. Those checks have been selling at Sotheby's and Christie's for over a hundred thousand dollars each. Now the Spanish tax authorities took Picasso to court over this. His lawyers had a good argument. What's he supposed to do if they don't cash his checks? It's not his fault, exactly. What she said. Exactly. So if essentially, the, exactly. So for the last 15 years, he pretty much got everything for free. Then he was kind of cute about it. He quietly let it out. That, you know, at uh, there was a four-year interval where he went to Mexico and he just hung out on the beach for a while and he was just being suave, right? He thinks, you know what? I'm going to put it out kind of quietly, but I'm going to mention to the art, to the art world. If you send me a check for money, this is Picasso, right? He says, if you send me a check for money, what does he have to? do before he endorses that check. He has to sign it. And on the back of the signature, say you send him a check for 5000 he would give you a $10,000 sketch. Interesting, hey? Again, those Can checks as well, sold at Sotheby's and Christie's for hundreds of thousands. Party? Can we have one of those? I would have loved to have one. Yay. 
be hanging out in Spain just a little bit longer. Anyway, that's just a little bit of trivia. Now, of course, I could talk about two hours on this man's life. He's got a tremendous, tremendous life starting off in Malaga, Spain. He passed away in Notre Dame de Vie with his wife, Jacqueline Rogue, sitting beside him from Pulmonary Edema. I mean, oh my gosh, there's just so much information. There's the Cape of Antibes. He's had three mansions. Oh my gosh. You know, he's in museums all over the world. Check out the history of Picasso. Erte. One of the master surrealists, ladies and gentlemen, the, the number one surrealist of all time is Salvador Dali, but it was Miro who was one of the very first surrealists that ever entered into surrealism, appointed by Andre Breton at the turn of the century. Everybody started going their own direction. You had Picasso and Brock that were the cubists. You had Chagall, of course, he was the first artist poet, this guy here. Then you had Erte, he's the father of Art Deco. Then you had the surrealists, like, uh, well, like I say, Salvador Dali, Jean Miro were the, were the surrealists. You had J Jackson Pollock and Kandinsky, they were the abstract artists. You had the Favist, uh, Matisse, all these guys started taking off being leaders in their own direction. He was one of the very first surrealists appointed by Andre Breton, but then Salvador Dali was the most now become the most uh, important surrealist ex exponent. But really, John Moreau was the first one to hold the baton for surrealism. So imagine the whole art world, hundreds of years before that, stoic, perfect realism. Because before 1830, Photography really didn't exist, so if you wanted to get a, a photo done of your wedding or something important, only the noblemen, the kings and queens could afford the artists because they would paint a picture of your wedding. Everything was perfect, stoic realism. And then, Moreau comes along and does something like this. It shook up the entire art world. So if you think of how important this is, it's like the guy inventing jazz, country music, rock music, the person that, you know, that first came out with the very first classical album. That's the power, the strength, and the importance of Jean Miro. That's why significant value. Again, ladies and gentlemen, when it comes to Marc Chagall, I know pretty much everything about this guy's entire life, from the time he was born in Viteb's Russia to when he passed away at St. Paul de Vence, just northwest of Nice, France. And it's incredible what this guy went through to earn the right to being the first artist poet. And the most important commission of the last 100 years was given to this man. Does anybody know what that is? For two, tri two trivia cards? Here's an example. You walk down the Champs de Lisée in Paris. You get to the Louvre. You take a left. Two blocks. You're going to come up to the Paris Opera House. Go up up the stairs. It's open most days for viewing. Look up. The entire ceiling was done by Marc Chagall, the number one most important commission of the last 100 years. The Opera Garnier, where the Phantom of Opera was made. Stained glass windows is the, the original of this. Solier, the, the lithographer, made the lithograph based on the original being, the stained glass windows. There's 12 windows of such nature from the 12 tribes of Israel. Again, I can go on and on and on about all of these editions as to what they're about. Two originals on the end, limited edition, limited edition, limited edition. The masters of the last 100 years. Sotheby's and Christie's, they take these guys' originals. They start around 1.2, 1.3 million. We slow down around 100 to 200,000. We're now pushing into the $300,000 range with the Nikitas. But as far as the most important art that's left on this planet in this price range, this is it. And this is the kind of art you're going to see on those Colin Sewer cruises. People are now sailing, never mind the food, the shows, the casino, the service, the ports, all those wonderful reasons why you want to cruise up until the last 10 years. People are now cruising just to get these. As you see, many pieces that are selling here today, ladies and gentlemen, this is not only a decision you're doing for yourself, this is a decision you're doing for your entire family. Hand these down to your kids, your grandkids. When people come over and they say, wow, that might be one reason why you might enjoy something like this. There's many reasons why you enjoy your artwork, but the number one reason, and how to decide which ones work for you, you like it. If there's one that you like, and there's one that works for you, I never used it before, but if I say it's in your means, ladies and gentlemen, now's the time to do something very important on the Pacific Star. My name is Degas from Vancouver, Canada. I'm now opening up the bidding, and very soon after this, we're gonna leave the remaining pieces. If there's one piece that works for you right now, now's the time. First time there's this gentleman here. 1960 Picasso, ladies and gentlemen, let, let me make sure I get the numbers real, all correct here to you. The, the, the Picasso, ladies and gentlemen, is coming up at 37,000. It has an estimated retail of 46,007. I've got 37 looking for 38 once, 37 looking for 38 twice, 37 looking for 38 third and final time. I do not see another hand. That is yours, ladies and gentlemen. A huge round of applause. Congratulations. That is the most important piece of art that's ever took this stage. And this gentleman owns it. Well done, sir. This is emotional for me because what that guy just did for his entire family, I wish I could do for my family. 
I'm not in a situation when I can. And when it happens, I feel the love. I feel the history. I feel the transition. Another round of applause. the numbers on these, and then we're going to stand up and take a break. Take a break. Gouache 1930 estimated retail on original Airtel. It has an estimated retail of 33,800 with an opening bid of 11,006. This one is Robe d'Azur in 1980. It was done 1975. Has an estimated retail of 62,300 with an opening bid of 33,800. Conservative, considering what Martin Lawrence is, are, are selling similar pieces for. Uh, do your homework, folks. Marquista estimated retail. Marquista, it's 34,004 down to 22,009. Some real treasures here. And the Tribe of Benjamin, once they're sold in a private collection, they will no longer be available to the end of the, the rest of the public. They're at the end of the editions on all of these. Last one. 51,9 down to 41,5. Ladies and gentlemen, stand up, stretch your legs, grab a drink. If you want to see those a little closer, come up. I'll share the numbers with you. Take a close look at these pieces. Look at them. Look at the wonderful history. Look at the talent. You'd have to pay an admission into a museum to see these. Now, if I was an, uh, a gemologist, and I, if I was to go out there, and if I was to spend $100,000 in diamonds, at this point in my life, because I'm not a gemologist, just what I know what I'm doing, what I get the real deal, do I know what I'm looking at? No, I haven't got a clue when it comes to diamonds. You could put the most expensive diamond in front of me and I wouldn't know the difference between that and a flawed one. I, I, I don't know the difference. Keep in mind, we have one of the best in the art world. This guy's, like I say, a mover and a shaker in the art world. It does not get bigger than the boss, the guy that runs this program. They've now spent well over $480 million on this art program, and it was because of the, what p and Princess were going to do collectively, now spilling out into Carnival. And uh, like I said, in the last 10 years, we have come on to Cunard and Costa, and it's only getting bigger. It was the decision of hiring the best they could find to run this program. And that's my boss, and that's why you're looking at such pieces, ladies and gentlemen. Stand up, stretch your legs, grab a drink. We're going to start back in six minutes' time with your requested pieces only, and then we're going to give away some art. If you see a sold sign, don't be alarmed. Ask. We may have more. It would just now have to go to the next bit higher on the limited editions. Of course, congratulations to all our successful bidders on the originals. Very important pieces going into very important homes. And, of course, I really insist, take my email address. I'll put you right on the front desk at customer service at any time in the future, whether it be during framing, after framing, has the piece been sent through DHL or FedEx? That's the kind of information I'll put you right on the front desk of customer service. Go ahead, play some music, Frederick. I've got the book up here for anybody who wants to know any opening bids. I've got the blue book, so come up and ask me. Uh, I, can, I can give you a really good idea as to what they're selling for Atlanta. I can also give you the exact opening bid, and I'll calculate the numbers for you so you have a really good idea, and hopefully everyone gets their pieces here at the opening bid. You will see more competitive bidding. Tomorrow we're going to fill up this entire room with all new artwork. This is the one day to bid on these, and may everyone go home very happy. Congratulations. In my humble opinion, welcome to the art world mine. Enjoy the art. Enjoy it for life. We'll start back up very soon in about five, six minutes with your requested pieces only.